Hello friends, welcome to Smiley Stories. Please do subscribe for more videos. So are you ready for a story? Jane Goodall, a champion of chimpanzees by Sarah Alby, pictures by Gustavo Mazzoli. Jane Goodall sat high in a tree in a rainforest in Eastern Africa. She peered through the thick leaves. Jane watched some wild chimpanzees. Her only tools were a pencil, a notebook, and binoculars. Jane was 26. The year was 1960. Jane had no science training. She had not even gone to college. Over the next 50 years, Jane would learn more about chimps than anyone else in the world. Jane had loved animals all her life. For her second birthday, Jane got a huge toy chimpanzee. She carried it everywhere. When Jane was five, she decided to watch a hen lay an egg. She crept into the hen house. Five hours later, the hen laid an egg. Jane's mother couldn't find her. She was frantic with worry. But she did not scold her daughter. She loved Jane's interest in animals. As Jane grew, she took notes about pets and farm animals. Her favorite animal of all was a dog named Rusty. He lived at a hotel nearby, but he spent his days with Jane. Jane dreamed of going to Africa to study the animals there, but she had to earn a living. At 18, she became a secretary. <laughs> then, one day, Jane got a letter. It was from an old school friend. The friend lived in Kenya. Would Jane like to come for a visit? Of course, she would. Jane met a famous scientist in Kenya. His name was Louis Leakey. He noticed Jane's way with animals. He offered her a dream job. Did she want to go to the rainforest to study wild chimpanzees? Of course, Jane said yes. For the first two months, Jane's mother came along to help. They set up camp in a rainforest in a country that would soon be called Tanzania. Every day, Jane sat on a hill. For hours, she watched the chimps. But they were far in the distance. They ran when Jane came too close. Jane tried to remain patient. She tried not to lose hope. Some days it poured. Some days she saw snakes. Buzzing insects beat her. Once she was scared by a cougar. Jane named all the chins she saw. There was Flo and Fifi and Ollie. She even named the chip Leaky. Then, one day, a chip came closer. Jane had named him David Greybeard. He showed others not to be afraid. Gradually, the chips lost their fear. They came to visit Jane at her camp. She gave them bananas to eat. No one had ever gotten this close to wild chimpanzees before. Jane discovered that chimps can feel angry, sad, lonely, and joyful. They even have best friends. One day, Jane saw a chimp make a tool out of a long stalk of grass. He poked it into the termite mound. Then he slurped up the termites. Before that, people thought only humans made and used tools. 
Another day, Jane discovered chimps eating meat. Before that, people thought chimps ate only plants. A photographer named Hugo came to take pictures of Jane. There was a TV show about Jane. After that, Jane became famous. Louis Leakey arranged for Jane to earn her PhD in England. Now she would be Dr. Goodall. Jane and Hugo got married. A few years later, they had a son. His name was also Hugo. Over the years, Jane worked hard. She started a research center. She helped many young scientists. She wrote many books about chimps. She received many awards. Jane visited chimps in science labs. She helped make their lives better. She worked with zoos to give chimps more space to play. She helped take care of baby chimps whose mothers had died. When Jane was too old to climb trees, she traveled far and wide. She gave speeches about chimps. She helped people find ways to protect the rainforest. Jane inspired a new generation of future scientists to follow in her footsteps. Today, Jane is famous for her work with chimpanzees, but she had also helped protect living spaces for both people and animals around the world. Remember Jane's toy chimpanzee? She kept it for the rest of her life. Here is the timeline. 1934 Valerie Jane Morris Goodall is born in London on April 3rd. 1957 Goodall works for Louis S. B. Leakey at the Nairobi National Museum in Kenya. 1960 Goodall begins observing chimps at Gombe Stream Game Reserve. 1964 Goodall marries Hugo Van Lovick, a wild animal photographer. 1965 Goodall earns a PhD from Cambridge University. 1965, Goodall earns a PhD from Cambridge University. She establishes the Gombe Stream Research Center. 1967, Goodall's son, Hugo Eric Louis Mann Lovick, is born. Goodall publishes the first of many books about chimpanzees. 1977, the Jane Goodall Institute is created. 1991, Goodall creates a youth organization called Roots and Shoots. 2014, Goodall celebrates her 80th birthday. Did you know these facts about chimpanzees? Each chimpanzee has its own personality, and chimpanzees can feel emotions. Scientists used to think only humans felt happy, sad, angry, or curious. Chimps walk on their front knuckles. Chimps have a big toe that looks like a human thumb. That means they can use their feet to grasp branches and food. Chimpanzees sleep in trees and make their own nests every night by bending branches. What was Jane Goodall's life with the chimps like? It was not easy to study chimps in the hot, hilly rainforest. Often, Goodall was drenched in rain. Sometimes she had to crawl on her stomach to make her way through dense trees and vines. Once when she waded into the lake, a six-foot-long snake slithered past her. The air was often thick with mosquitoes and biting insects. What's in a name? Before Jane Goodall came to study chimpanzees, most scientists and animal researchers assigned numbers to the animals they studied. Goodall chose to give the chimps names. Some people thought that was unscientific, but Goodall did it her way. Jane Goodall had received many honors for her work. She has given speeches all over the world, 
urging people to protect chimpanzees and their environment. The end. Thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please like, share, and consider subscribing.